assaulted and then shot. USPS officials say... Fire sticking out of it. The island is destroyed. But where modern technology has failed the island, it's the old school U.S. Postal Service that has stepped up. Police haven't released many details. Neighbors are still reeling. Emergency officials are flooded with more... Jared Lee Jeffries. We are asking citizens to please heed a warning. Your time is running out. with breaking news out of East Chicago, an explosion inside a post office sends one worker to the hospital. Investigators in Northwest Indiana on high alert looking for this man. He's a person of interest in a pipe bomb explosion in East Chicago. Federal authorities announced today the arrest of 45-year-old Munster resident Eric Creek. Eric Creek admitted to mailing the explosive device and sending a second threatening letter. It is not acceptable for the mail to be used to further someone's criminal pursuits. A scare for the president's family. His daughter-in-law, Vanessa Trump, was rushed to the hospital after opening a letter containing white powder. This morning, a 24-year-old man, Daniel Frizziello, was arrested and charged with sending threatening letters. The letters contained a white powder that turned out to be harmless, but which triggered a hazardous materials response and caused Donald Trump Jr.'s wife to go to the hospital to be checked out. Weeks after Hurricane Maria tore through Puerto Rico, decimating communication lines, cell phones were still of little use to family members desperate for news. But where modern technology has failed the island, it's the old school U.S. Postal Service that has stepped up, serving as the central means of communication, delivering letters and care packages to Puerto Rico's residents. They're carrying packages of scarce food and water supplies and are collecting information on sick and elderly residents in the far-flung parts of the island where hospitals have closed down. Six-year-old Julia Poff is accused of sending three explosive devices through the mail, one to Governor Greg Abbott, another to President Barack Obama, and a third to the former commissioner of the Social Security Administration. An indictment was not returned in this case until this month. An investigator testified one of those devices actually made it into the hands of Governor Greg Abbott. The postal worker is dead after police say she was shot outside of the Cab County Post Office. Now this happened just a short time ago. The woman who was shot and killed is relatively young, about 20 years old. All week long, police have been looking for Quantes Tyree in connection with Monday's brutal murder of his ex-girlfriend, Tarika Terrell. From Cleveland to Euclid and beyond, agents fanned out across Northeast Ohio. From there, authorities say the drugs would be stored at stash houses across the region and then sold. Uh, we had a, a detonation uh, in a residence. Authorities have now tracked the mailing address of package bombs sent to two Bay Area families. Two people were hurt in the blast. Both bombs contained pieces from the same air conditioner box and the trigger mechanisms were identical, strung together with batteries and fishing line. It was U.S. Postal Inspectors who managed to collect DNA, which matched this man, 56-year-old Ross Laverty of Oakland.
estimated $3 billion are stolen or frauded from millions of American seniors. Over the past week, more than 100 postal inspectors around the country executed search warrants in 14 locations. We can't arrest all of these con artists, so prevention is truly critical. You can be a target, but you don't have to be a victim. As we reported last night, three package bombs exploding, two people killed, those packages left on doorsteps. Tonight, the youngest victim identified, the 17-year-old Draylon Mason, a dedicated student with a passion for music. The police are now dealing with a sixth bombing tonight in Texas' capital city. The suspected serial bomber is dead. Officials say the suspect blew himself up inside his vehicle during a showdown with police this morning. His death ended a dramatic three weeks in Texas. Two people died and others were injured by numerous package explosions. This was the scene for nearly four hours this morning. Police haven't released many details, but we know hours later they shut down eastbound 30 near Sylvan to search for clues. You can see Dallas and postal police fanning out, even using a canine. The unexplained murder of 58-year-old Tony Mosby on a Dallas freeway this week now appears to be a case of road rage. Federal authorities have arrested 25-year-old Donnie Farrell. Authorities say Farrell told the men not to say anything after seeing news reports that Mosby was dead. But two of them went to a Fort Worth FBI office a day later and turned him in. Authorities swarmed this north side townhouse in February. They recovered a trove of incriminating material that included counterfeit postal keys in various stages of completion, drugs, and mail belonging to people other than the guy who lived there, Jared Lee Jeffries. The raid led to criminal charges and 18 months in prison for Jeffries. Using a federal warrant, a postal inspector put a GPS tracker inside a fake package that had valid postage and even a tracking number and left it inside a mail locker. Court records show less than two weeks later, Jeffries took the bait. Jeffries remains in federal custody, facing new charges that could tack an additional 15 years onto his prison sentence. We are going to begin tonight with some breaking news. A government crackdown on sex trafficking. Federal agents this afternoon seized the classified ad website Backpage.com and closed it down. Today, the federal government seized the website and is expected to unseal charges later today. Apartment 2 in Rogers Park. Federal affidavit states it became UPS's new corporate headquarter address in October. After the man who lives inside simply filled out a change of address form at a post office. UPS's corporate mail was then redirected and delivered here, tubs of it. The allegations are that UPS's mail was coming here because you switched the corporate headquarter address to your apartment. Yeah, those are the allegations, correct. And what do you say about those allegations? Your allegations. Spruce told me he did get some UPS mail, but claims he never opened it. The mail carrier told investigators he noticed and even personally delivered the large amounts of mail. The question then is, why wasn't it first flagged by the post office? Maybe getting some of your mail late over the next few days. The U.S. Postal Service says earlier this week there was a mercury spill in Capel and some temporary delays are now happening. Back behind me, as you can see, this processing center here in Capel is a hazmat scene and a criminal investigation. But while the post office acknowledged the delays, it couldn't say when customers would begin receiving their mail again. And you rely on your mail for everything. A lot of people do. 
A U.S. Postal Service truck and mailbox taped off with crime scene tape. Police from the U.S. Postal Inspector's Office collecting mail delivered from that truck. Before police left, they collected all the mail delivered in that mail truck from the mailbox and neighbors. The Postal Service says mail in that truck will not be delivered until they can make sure it's absolutely safe. Reporting in James City County, I'm Kim Kung, News 3. The Postal Service is issuing a commemorative forever stamp to express gratitude and reverence for this universally admired group of dedicated men and women. With this stamp, the Postal Service recognizes these brave men and women, including firefighters, law enforcement officers, and emergency medical services personnel who respond to critical situations with skill, dedication, and unfailing bravery.